Hello, my man. And I'm a PC. Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cammy Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to a tech edition of Strange Love. I'm your host, Cammy Chaos. I'm joined, as always, by Dr. Normal. Hello. And this week's guest is Verso, a.k.a. Banana Leaf Fishbones, a.k.a. some other names that I'm not going to tell you. What's up? And tonight on our tech edition, we're going to talk about Apple things. Ooh. Macintosh things. Mac, my users are... Wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. Um, so let me start by telling you a sad little tale of woe. I've heard you have a tale of woe. About a year and a half ago, actually last year, 2007 in February, I was looking for a new computer. As you do. As you do. When you need one, when... It happens. You know, your computer's dead. It's or time. you need a new purse and... You decide to get a new computer or something? I don't know. Okay, new purse, new computer, not the same at all. No, not okay. not, not at all the same. No. Completely different. Would you like me to buy a computer instead of... Hmm. So I could get but a But if he com- thinks they're the same, maybe I should take that all back. Yeah, let's not... Okay. Yeah, no, new computer, totally new the purse. same. Sorry, totally, totally the, the same. same. It's good. So we went looking for a new computer, and I had it in my head that maybe I'd like to have a Mac. Okay. So we went downtown a month before my 30th birthday... The day before Super Bowl Sunday, which I don't watch Super Bowl, but it's worth noting because it plays into the story later. And we went to the Mac store. Okay. And it was very crowded, and I played with MacBooks, and I played with MacBook Pros. And there were some things I very much liked about the MacBook Pro, except for the price tag. That's never something anyone likes about the MacBook Pro. No. And um, so I really liked it, but I had some questions, and I couldn't quite make the decision because I've always had PCs. Okay. And... I was concerned that because my entire house has PCs. So I thought I'd look around a little bit more. So we went out and had a lovely lunch down at, um, oh, oh, what's the name of that really? Uh, It doesn't matter what the name of the restaurant was, but great. Do you remember? Alessandro's. Oh, yeah. Alessandro's. Do you ever go? Do you ever go there? No, I go buy it. Mm, I like that place. And it seems like a place I should really be eating. You should go there sometime. I'm going to have to check it out. Yeah, they have good food. So we went to Alessandro's and then we went home. Okay. And then the next day on Super Bowl day, while everyone else was getting ready to watch the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. we went to go shop some sales and see if we could find a laptop for me. All right. And we found one. Okay. That was significantly less expensive than a MacBook. And it was from a major manufacturer that you would all know. And you probably own something from them in your house somewhere. Um, and it had great graphics. Which and is I, good. And I really liked it. Yeah. So we bought it. Okay. And because Mr. Oh, Dr. Normal here is very cautious, we also got the extended warranty. Okay. Well, because the last laptop you had... um, Was murdered. Water got spilled on it. By a cat. By a cat. 32 ounces of cold, cool, filtered water. And it was never the same afterwards. No, it wasn't. So They tend not to be. Extended warranty, good thing. Yes. So we brought it home, we set it up, we went about getting all the crap spyware and crap crapware that they load onto your computer. Please have Earthlink and AOL and... What was the operating system? And Windows, yeah, it was Windows Vista. Um, So it worked, it worked, I was fine. This is indeed a tale of what? For a couple of months, a few months. A couple of months, okay. And then right before we got uh, ready to take our trip to Disneyland, yes, my computer died completely dead would not start it was just dead it was just dead 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 it was dead so we took it back to the store that we bought it from went through the whole thing yada 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 they had to send it back to the manufacturer Mm -hmm. and eventually after a little over a month i think i got a brand spanking new laptop because it was so toaster caked which to be fair is good that they took care of you and didn't just go oh it they didn't want to that sucks the store pressed it the store pressed the issue fast forward a year later same exact thing happened. The computer just completely died. I am very unhappy. And it makes me think, I may have made the wrong decision. Maybe I was hasty. 
and not maybe buying a, a Mac. Maybe it's a sign from maybe, the universe. Maybe it's a sign from Mac saying, Cammy, you know you want one. It's Steve saying, there's good in you. Mm-hmm. I can see it. I have felt it. So, Actually, but, I was at Camp Naughty, so yeah, I, I have felt it. Yeah. <laughs> And we may have to set that up. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. So I have a few questions for you because I know that you're a Mac girl. Not just Mac girl. I am Apple certified from Mac OS 10.5. Ooh. That's very impressive. So you're a resident expert. You're an Uber that Mac girl. That I am. Excellent. Yes. I don't think we've ever had a resident expert on the show before. How are you on Windows Vista? Not bad, actually. Yeah. We're going to get there. I don't want to be. We're yeah. going to get there. But I am. So knowing that Verso is is certified and not just certifiable. Just say, the Strange Love podcast is powered by Windows XP. Which is a good decision Exclusive. when your option is Vista. Yes. So I know that your husband is not a Mac user. No. He uses Microsoft products. That he does. And what I'd like to figure out before I bring a beautiful little Mac into my home is how do you incorporate a Mac into a Windows household? By and large, it's a piece of cake. What it comes down to really is the specifics of what you're wanting to do. Mm -hmm. Sharing files is a very easy thing. Oh, yeah? Depending on the file. Mm -hmm. So if you have applications on the Windows systems in your house, Mm -hmm. you will need to find out if there is a Mac version or Mac equivalent of those programs. So for instance, get the... Office, Microsoft Right, there is Office a Macintosh Mac. version of Office, okay. which even Microsoft admits has more features and better stability than the Windows version. So let me ask you. Microsoft tells you that. Do you use it? I have. Um, are the, the command prompts the same, like con- control A for, con- do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, um, and some are mm-hmm. and some are not. Uh, the biggest difference you'll notice if you're a keyboard command person i really am which laptop people generally are yeah as i am a laptop person um generally what you will find is instead of using the control key to do things you're going to use the apple key to do things okay the control key will also give you a certain set of keyboard commands but they tend to be different Mm -hmm. so copy for example is control c in windows and it's apple c on a mac so just replace apple for the most part with the control button right but if you do, but like control in certain things, if you use the control key for things, or if you hold down the control key while you click on something, mm-hmm. that's the same as right click and it gives you an okay. option of very, very good. You know, your pop-up menu comes up and you can do different things. So what if then we want, you know, we've got the same, we have a backup server mm-hmm. in our house. All easy peasy shouldn't be an issue. You will need to have something Mac formatted mm-hmm. for your, or something that your Mac can read that your computer will back up to. Okay. But that's not an issue. And like an MP3 is still an MP3 on both systems. Like you, Office yeah. was the example yeah. that you used. Anything that you create in Office, whether it's Word or Excel or PowerPoint, will still be readable on all the Windows machines. And anything that's created on the Windows machines, you'll still be able to read. The file access is going to be the only difference. If there's something that, if there's something living on the doctor's computer Mm -hmm. and it's behind a password and you know, he has a hard time getting to it. You probably aren't going to be able to access that across the network. It's going to have to be somewhere shareable, but if we have it on a shared drive, right. You would, but it's the same sort of file access thing you would have. Even if you had a windows machine is correct. You may, you need to make sure everybody can get to those files, but, um, there are certain things that you will need to get a Mac version for. Mm -hmm. And there may be things depending on what you're using. There may be things that, you will need to get an equivalent. Like maybe you're using something specific for bookkeeping and you will need to make like mm. the banking or the checkbook and you will want to make sure that there's an equivalent yeah. and there's always an equivalent. Yeah. That's the thing a lot of people sort of still have the misconception about is there's no software. And what that usually means is that the, when, when people say there's no software, what they really mean is there's no version of this program I want to use that's that comes for a Mac. for a Mac, which is not the same as saying there's no banking software Correct. for the Mac. There's just not that banking right. software. This guy may not make a Mac version, okay. but that's not the same at all. So you may have to learn a little bit different application-wise. You mm-hmm. may have to learn a little bit different way to do things or learn a new program to mm-hmm. do something different. But anything that you want to do on a Windows machine, you can absolutely do on a Mac. So let me ask you, because this is probably my largest concern. Yes. 
which it shouldn't be, but it totally is. <laughs> um, and I know that they actually do make the program yes. for Apple, but I'm, okay. I'm a huge Photoshop user. Actually, I yes. cut down to just the elements because I found that elements pretty much does everything I want to because right. I don't like $600 price tags. That too. Um, so have you used Photoshop? I have used Photoshop on both platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, through my job, mm -hmm. I have to do a little bit. Mm -hmm. I have to know enough. Mm -hmm. And I've done that, and it works reasonably the same okay. you still have the same sort of especially with cs3 you have the options of customizing the palettes and moving things around and the nice thing about it that i don't remember if the windows version has it is something called saved workspaces mm -hmm. so if you really like to have all of your palettes collapse down very small and you have that little thin strip down one side it'll remember for you it'll have yours you can save that and then when the doctor wants to come play fun with photoshop and he's on it and wants everything huge and expanded all out so that you see all the sub palettes and all the everything. Mm -hmm. He can save that. And then he's got his setup and you've Very got your nice. setup and you can switch between those. And it makes it really handy. I think I think the one for the Windows version, it, you can save it, but yeah. it doesn't save for more than one person. It's just however you have it set up is how it's set up. Yeah. And you can switch between workspaces in the, nice. in the Mac version. And it does all the same sort of basic. It has all the same functionality. They've done. A, they've really done a lot, and it's really a testament to Adobe and their programmers mm -hmm. that they're able to make those kind of things happen. Also on the Windows system, because the way Windows handles things is very, very different, mm -hmm. and they really sort of made their rep specifically with Photoshop, but primarily on a Mac. Yeah. So the fact that they've turned the Windows platform into something that can be viable for design people mm -hmm. is something that I think is really impressive that they have done. So everything in Photoshop works really well. I appreciate the Adobe people. I really do. I love my Photoshop. I remember the first time I learned how to use Photoshop when I was just, I don't know, I was in my 20s, but whatever. <laughs> um, and then my next question is, I'm yes. not a big fan of Safari. Firefox is phenomenal. And it runs well on it? Because it's what I use on my computer. I am not a gentle user mm -hmm. of Firefox. I yeah, have been I known, know. I've been known to accidentally hit Apple Q instead of maybe Apple W. And actually had it drop down the little sheet that says, you are about to close 82 tabs. <laughs> are you sure you want to quit? And I will run it for days and days and days and days and days and days and days mm -hmm. with many, many tabs. I will open a bunch. I'll close a bunch. I'll like flip through Twitter on the web page and go, ooh, I like that. Let me go read that mm -hmm. and just hit it and then keep reading Twitter. Mm -hmm. And I'll get five or 10 links that way. And then I go through my reader and in my RSS reader, I've got, ooh, that looks cool and that looks cool and that looks cool and that looks cool. And then... Instant Messenger too. people go, oh my gosh, have you seen the fail blog today? Send me a link. <laughs> so I've got all that kind of stuff and I'm not a person, I'm not shy about opening a bunch of tabs. Mm -hmm. I do tend, I do try to go through and, and close them occasionally, but mm -hmm. I've had lots open and it's never really given me an issue. Fantastic. All right, I have one more question on yes. this particular topic and that is this. If something happens to my Mac... Yes. Like it decides that it doesn't want to run anymore just because I'm the person that was touching it. Can I just take it back to the Mac store? Yes. And will they say, how high would you like us to jump, Cami? Primarily, yes, by and large. Okay. Uh, they do offer also an extended warranty system. There's one year mm -hmm. generally on all the hardware. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about the Apple warranty, at least this used to be the case, and I'm not sure if it still is, but I'd like to think so is that any time during that year, mm -hmm. you can buy what they call Apple Care. Mm -hmm. And the way Apple Care works is it's a percentage of what you paid mm -hmm. for your computer or your hardware. Mm -hmm. So if you bought like a $200 iPod, it's like $20 or something mm -hmm. for the Apple Care for that, which gives you three additional years. Wow. So yeah. So like 360 days after I bought it, I could still go and get the you Apple You could go Care. in and say, yes, I would like Apple Care on my laptop. And they, will, they are happy to do that for you. And I have to say... Um, and this is sort of a locals only sort of thing, but a couple of weeks ago, in case you're the last person to find out, Verso got an iPhone day of release. Ooh, it wasn't a couple of weeks ago. It was a week ago. It was today. a week ago. Okay, it was a week ago. <laughs> I stood in line all the live long day and was blessed with a new iPhone, the 3G, the official new hotness. And the reason this is interesting is because I was waited on by a lovely gentleman at the Apple store in mm -hmm. Pioneer Place. His name is Marcus. He had purple hair. Hi, and Marcus. He had spangly purple Doc Martens to match. Oh. And he was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember the last time. And I told him how excited I was about it because he said, Do you know what the best part of this is? They told us you get to open it. 
So he had his little opening tool. So he opened oh, the plastic so on nice. it, just broke the cellophane, mm-hmm. and handed it to me. And I got to open the box and take out the phone. That is so nice. And then hand it to them to continue to activate. But, oh, it was lovely. And he made extra sure that, because I bought two, mm-hmm. one for me and one for Mr. Fishbones. So he made sure that I was getting the right one activated on the right account mm-hmm. and double-checked all of that for me and was really doing his part to make sure that it was very, that it was done. And I had told him I waited for so long because uh, I was at the original Steve note where the Mm -hmm. iPhone was announced in person. I was in the room at the time and I waited and waited and waited because I've heard, I had heard from people even at that point that edge was a slow network. Mm -hmm. So I waited and waited and waited. And now I actually finally got to have one. And I told him I'm so excited because I was there at the Steve note. And he said, I think it's very cute that you call it the Steve note. And I said, well, do you know that when you have a Steve note, the day the Steve note happens is called Steve mess, (laughs) to which he also was very entertained. So it was very entertaining to get to talk to him. And I I told him, I feel so close to you now, Marcus. He gave me a hug when I got my, when I was all done with all my activation. He was a delightful human being. And so I have to totally give them a shout out um, because Marcus is awesome. Bravo, Marcus. Yay, Marcus. But by and large, the history of my Mac purchases have all been at Mac Force on First and Salmon, which I'm not trying to advertise, but Mm -hmm. um, I do like them. And they're very cool. They're really good with repairs. They're very good with... um, answering questions Mm -hmm. they're really a good a good place as far as aftercare is concerned so i personally have have done absolutely my fair share of time at mac force and there's actually one of the people at mac force has told me that um i at times have sold more hardware and software for them than people who are actually employed there wow so that's that's a lot of it's a lot of hardware to sell so now that we've talked about Macintosh versus PC and how they yes. can live harmoniously. Which they can. I think we should. What color are you headed for? I was going to go purple, but okay. you're the guest. You can be purple if you want. I'll be purple. Okay, I'll be red. Oh, yes. Can everyone hear that? We're having a lightsaber battle on our iPhone. With our phones, ladies and gentlemen. Now yeah. I know why I'm not getting the good noise. I put it in the wrong hand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to be careful not to cover up the... Yeah. I wonder if this is as compelling for them as it is for us. I don't know, but I could just sit and do this for another hour. You know what we need to do is we need to go upstairs and get my lightsabers oh. and hold our lightsabers in one hand and our and iPhones in the other. And I just do this to make the noise. Yeah. Okay. We can do that after the show. Okay. So I have the old iPhone. Yes. You have the new iPhone. I do. I like them both. I do too. I think any iPhone is a good iPhone. That it is. Um, And since, for the most part, I use my... The reason that we made the decision not to jump and go get the new 3Gs is that we primarily use our iPhones on our network. Yeah. Or if we go to the coffee shop. I mean, you know, when we're going down the street, if we're in the car and we're trying to find something, we'll use it. But for the most part, we use it when we don't want to turn on a laptop. Right. Or we don't want to get up because we always have our phones on us. So we'll just, you know, yeah. reach up and, oh, let me check. What's going on on Twitter? And that was oh, the most ha, interesting. Ha, ha. Yes. Yeah. That was the interesting thing about uh, Mr. Fishbones getting one was that uh, he really wasn't sold on it mm-hmm. but initially. He, mm-hmm. It wasn't his bag. And I sort of assumed that was going to continue to be the case partly because it was an Apple product. Mm-hmm. And the only Apple product he personally has any direct experience with is iTunes. And iTunes on Windows is really Suckage. no bueno. No. So he was really not pro iPhone. Mm-hmm. And then, so I sort of looked around at like some other smartphones because he sort of was looking, was feeling like maybe I need a big boy phone. Yeah. And I knew I needed a big boy phone, but. Yeah, that's another story. You were waiting patiently I, for I, the right big boy phone. Not patiently at all, but yes, <laughs> I was waiting. And what ended up happening was um, I looked around at Centros and Trios and mm-hmm. what do you think of this? And, you know, maybe a BlackBerry is really what you're looking for, but listen to these features. And then, and so I told him, here's here's what this phone has that you might, that might be what you're looking for. And here's what this phone has, might be what you're looking for. And they're cheaper and you know but the data plans were more yeah they were for for the other data- things and the, in some cases are still more mm-hmm. like the blackberry plan i think is like 45 a month for like the serious data plan yeah so so the whole week not last week 
not this last week, but the mm-hmm. week before the Correct. iPhones were actually released, he would come and sit down on the couch and say, okay, so I read this thing. Tell me how that really is going to work or tell me if this is a problem or tell me you know, why this is set up that way. So I would answer all his questions. Tell, this, is what, you know, this is what's going on with that and that's how this works and these are set up in, in this particular fashion and this is how come. Mm-hmm. And that was basically that that was basically what I spent the whole week doing. So then he actually took time off work last Friday to stand in line with me and wait so that we could get our phones. Mm. So the actual acquisition story is an entirely other matter, but it was something that was important enough to him that he actually went into work late so that he could make sure that he was getting a phone, which to me was very exciting. Yes. So now he too has one. And then last weekend I was, away from home overnight last friday night and so on saturday i came home and he came home he had to work in the morning so he came home and he ended up taking a nap out on the couch and i let him sleep for hours it was a few hours because i knew he he looked really tired he said he was tired so i let him sleep so he woke up and said and and said why did you let me sleep so long i said well i didn't think you slept very well last night because i wasn't here Mm -hmm. and he goes well you were part of it And I said, part? (laughs) And he held up his phone and looked at me and went, (sighs) so that's what he was doing. Well, I was at Camp Naughty. Yes, I was at Camp Naughty. Mm -hmm. And he was up getting phone saber and Shazam for his phone. Shazam. Now you were telling me earlier, what is Shazam? And why don't I have it yet? That That I can't answer. The second piece of your question, I have no idea. What is Shazam? Shazam is a program that samples audio Mm. and then it will take the audio that it finds Mm -hmm. and it will do some sort of magical thing and then it will come back and tell you it was this song by this group on this album and it gives you links to purchase that song on itunes you mean it's magic and it tells you and if there's youtube video it shows you a link for youtube you can go search for it on youtube and watch the video as well on your phone right that minute it's magic and I found out how awesome it was accidentally. How did you find out? I was watching a movie mm-hmm. and there was a song at the end. Mm-hmm. And I was listening to the song and Mr. Fishbones came out and said, that sounds like David Byrne, but this is not a talking head song. And I said, I'm not really sure it's David Byrne. And he said, well, I, I think it is. And I said, I disagree. And then couldn't find it in the credits. And I said, well, watch this. I hate this. it when you can't find it. It was on TiVo. So I backed it up to part of the song that sounded like something that mm-hmm. you would know. Mm-hmm. And so I got my phone out and said, I downloaded this thing called Shazam. Let's see. Fired it up, pointed it. I said, I'll tell you who it is. And so I took out my phone and I held it up to the television. Mm-hmm. And he said, why are you showing <laughs> the movie to your phone? And I said, just you wait. And so it got finished and it said sending and it vibrated a little bit to let me know it was sending the information. Mm-hmm. And it sat there for a sec and then it came back and said, it's this song, and it's by Rusted Root, and it's on this album. Would you like to buy it on iTunes? Wow. Unbelievable. It really was magic. That's amazing. I'm absolutely convinced. Someone else mentioned on Twitter that they were using it and that it was picking up, like, Bollywood songs. Wow. Yeah. So whatever magic it is they're using for this, they're serious. That is really impressive. That's pretty funny. I'm in make a note now. Shazam. I have a question. My yes. question is, does iTunes run any better on a Mac? Because it runs like it's, crap I think on we, a PC. I think we covered that. We okay, did. Okay, well, I've been away for a while. He was away. So. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's much better. Yes. And I was actually... Muy bueno. Muy bueno. Is, yes. Is so you bueno. already asked the question. Well, I, I brought it up because part of the reason Good. that Mr. Fishbones didn't want an iPhone was because the only direct Apple experience he has is with iTunes, which he is not happy with. <laughs> no. So, mm-hmm. It's iTunes. really a it's giant a com- pain in the... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Took us. PC. Yeah. It's really not fun on the PC. I know it's no fun on a PC. Yeah. So it's a lot nicer on, on a Mac. It, it tends to be happier. I, I'm really feeling bad for you because I think she answered all of my questions in such a satisfactory way that I'm ready to go buy my Mac now. But do you have any? Yeah, do you have any questions? As another computer user in the house. No, I think I think we're good. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, network setup as a footnote. Um, network setup is a piece of cake on the machine to get mm-hmm. your to get your machine set up. Mm-hmm. All the information is there. It's really easy. We Finding actually, all of that to configure it is all really nice. We actually set up a friend's uh, Power Mac. Yeah. When he was here, one weekend. So mm-hmm. yeah, we actually allowed him to have access to our. Oh. Yeah. He must have been a really good friend. What else Kelly? do we got going here? <laughs> um. We've been talking about our iPhones. We phone sabered. We phone sabered. Oh, you already did that. While you were out. Yeah, did you want a phone saber with us? No, I don't have it. But (gasps) I have something better. He's a blast. How can you have something better? Do you have Tippy Cow? Oh, Oh, no, no, no. He's going to share. Hold on. No, no, no. I told you. All you supposed cool kids, but you don't have this. Make the noise. (gasps) You have the cowbell. Make the noise. It is the cowbell. Oh, I got a fever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as soon as you go home tonight, I'm going to be upstairs like downloading stuff. So there you go. So for all those that don't do But the, he doesn't have the button. Like, okay, thank you very the much. The start button that I have. No, mine didn't work. I'm going to try it again. Okay. I'm going to give it another try. Okay. Yeah, some of the apps don't work so well. Yeah, I think part of that is like 1.0, on but Twitter-ific. I also know. Twitterific. Yeah. Um, I do also know, though, that there's... Oh. um. I do follow some people from the Icon Factory, mm-hmm. who are the people who make Twitterific. Yeah, I see your phone for a moment. And they've talked about um, the NDA mm-hmm. and right. how that's really kept people from sharing information mm-hmm. with each other. Like, I learned this thing that will really help iPhone development, but I can't tell Cami, who I know is having trouble with the same thing mm-hmm. because of the NDA that I signed. So I have the Mario button, which actually does work for me. Let's see. Cool. So there you go. How about how about anything? Do you use Evernote or any of those? Um, I'm just sort of getting into Evernote, which I um, have really enjoyed. I haven't done a lot with it. We were actually discussing it at Beer and Blog today, mm-hmm. which is where I was before I came over here. And the neat thing about Evernote, if you haven't spent a lot of time with it, is that it will basically OCR your images, optical character recognition. Mm-hmm. Um, it will pull words out of the thing that you take the picture of. So I could take a picture of your hard hat over mm-hmm. there with the lovely Vidoop logo on it. Vidoop. And then later it would have it automatically tagged and I could go type in Vidoop in my Evernote notebook and it would automatically find the picture I took of your helmet without wow. me having to do the typing and all of the work and other such nonsense. So that's very cool. It's, it's like really if you scan neat. something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the awesome. example I had is that... Uh, we did a lot of television shopping, mm-hmm. and I was using my cell phone camera to take pictures of the tags nice. for the TVs so that I could go home, since I didn't have the internet at that point on my phone, at least not well, and mm-hmm. not in any sort of appreciable screen size, I could take that and then go home and look up each of those models in a new tab in Firefox mm-hmm. and read more information and do some research about those TVs and help make a more informed decision. And I also had the price, you know, right there. I know Correct. at this place, it's this much. So... Having someone else be doing that for me so that I could just search Samsung or Panasonic mm-hmm. or Toshiba and see all of the price tags for Toshiba that I took pictures of That's very would be cool. really handy. That's very, very handy. So did you ever use a Palm? I did. I, I still do. I have a tungsten T3 yeah. that I adore. I think, it, I think the iPhone was limited. And Absolutely. now the apps are coming in to bring it up to speed with the functionality of sure. the trio yeah. uh, of the Palm platform. Which is an interesting thing because I was thinking about my Palm when I was setting up my phone and you know, tricking it out and what kind of wallpaper and what's my ringtone going to be and that kind of stuff. And the thing to the thing that struck me as maybe a small, dumb thing but still is in my brain is if you've ever started a Palm, like taken it out of the box brand new and gone through the setup process or the battery's gone completely dead or you've done a hard reset and it has to go back to factory defaults, one of the steps in that process is take your stylus and tap this target and then tap it here and yep. then tap it here. And it calibrates. I used to like to recalibrate mine. Yes. But it was fun. And it <laughs> calibrates the touching. So like for me, I'm left handed. So it knows, you know, I'm not touching dead center. I may be touching slightly to the left or maybe somebody else is touching slightly to the right, a little high, a little low. And it helps compensate for that. And it mm-hmm. would be really nice if the same sort of calibration was available 
in my phone because I find sometimes I'm hitting the wrong key because I'm using like not the absolute edge of my finger, but slightly in. Yeah. That sort of thing. And it would really be nice if that were an option. That's one of the things that I was thinking when I was. It took me a couple weeks to get the hang of the, the touch keyboard. Yeah. One of the big changes in the software update is that when you type a password and it masks the password, it shows you the letter you type for a couple seconds and then masks it. Did that not happen before? No, that it did didn't not used to happen. happen. It didn't happen. And let, it was, let me, I was always let me tell mistyping you, my try password. Try to ta- type in our WEP 128 key. Oh, God. Yeah, oh. it took like four tries. And then yeah. I was like, okay, I give up. I'll do it in the morning when I have some coffee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was oh, like typing. That would, be, yeah. that would be unfortunate. It was bad news bears. I can imagine. And you that know, here's another thing. This is, I think, the big criticism. No cut and paste. What's up with that? Even still. Yeah. Now, the interesting that? thing that about that, I wish I knew. The interesting thing that I've seen is that there are a couple of places where they've asked, I don't, the engineer's name escapes me, but they've asked an official iPhone engineer from Apple, cut and paste. What gives, basically? And the response that he's giving is not, it's coming. And the response he's giving is not, it's not coming. And it's not, the OS isn't capable. He's giving this sort of vaguely worded reply. Ars Technica has one of the interviews, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And so they talk about, you know, well, it's really odd that this is the way that he's telling people, that this is the phrase he's using for the cut and paste, which is very interesting to me. Um, The only other real interesting information I have as far as all the iPhone bits go is that I am friends with an engineer who actually works on mobile me, which is no longer push. They've actually told people they're not allowed to say it anymore. The Apple employees in the Apple stores Mm -hmm. are not allowed to call it push email anymore. They're supposed to call it like instant or on demand or, Mm -hmm. you know, really quick email (laughs) instead of push. Really quick. Yes. And, uh, the thing that was interesting is I follow him on Twitter and, uh, earlier, like all over the last week, he, He's had like maybe one tweet a day and he's somebody who tends to be a bit higher frequency. And he had one that said something along the lines of, they're bringing us donuts now, so I think it must be morning. Oh my gosh. So then, yesterday I think it was, he had one that said, did you know, he said, totaling my overtime, did you know there are only 168 hours in a week? I was here for 132 of them. Shoot. Yes. A lot of so then a couple of hours later, cranky, he had time. reintroducing myself to my wife and my doggy, mm. which I thought was very nice. Mm-hmm. Well, so does this mean the service is up now because the service was down? There were a lot of problems with it. And the nice thing, not the nice thing about having problems, but the nice thing about Apple responding to that is that everybody using it gets a free month. You're automatically bumped up a month of service. That's nice. So if you are a Dot .Mac subscriber or you signed up for Mobile Me, you're expiration has been bumped out 30 days automatically which i thought was nice of them to do that is so we should we should wrap it up but we have one one more pressing question okay and that is when is it going to support flash i mean oh that wasn't even my pressing question that's a good one (laughs) i mean every website now there's a youtube app thank god finally i love the youtube app yes but well that was there in the the first one but yeah yeah. but still it's like but they had to build a separate app to make that happen yeah you go everywhere and you know you do you need to use flash i mean right it's like if you go up to Ustream, you want to stream you want to check something out well it's all flash driven even thing even like a website with a flash navigation you know which is very common now oh yeah you can't you can't 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 go anywhere on that website now it's very frustrating um I'm Burger, not sure. Burgerville was an issue for us. We went yes. to we tried to go to the Burgerville website. Yes. And it was all flash based. My my other question though was real quick before we end, um, when Dr. Normal was using his trio, yes. we could use a card. An S D card. Yes. And that was fantastic because yes. he could copy things to his S D card. Oh yeah. Stick him in, have him in his trio. Which was standard palm functionality, which is really handy. It's really fantastic. And yes. I think I got my iPhone several months before he got his, and I think what mm-hmm. held him back at the end was the Storage. fact that he didn't have sure. the SD card. He couldn't have that um, mm-hmm. to store things and also to transfer things easily. Right. I've wondered about that, too. I'm not sure what I'm not sure what makes that a good idea, especially given that SD cards are very cheap mm-hmm. and solid-state drives are not. Yeah. So I've, I've always wondered what the what the use case was with that. But I think also, additionally, I know there was a point 
just to completely answer the flash question um i think part of it has to do with adobe and it may be there was um long ago when apple went intel Mm -hmm. um there was a point where the next version of operating system at that point Mm -hmm. which i believe was supposed to be tiger um tiger was going to be a 64-bit operating system and it was going to use the entire chip and there was code being written by Adobe, they were trying to recode big pieces of the Creative Suite to make sure that it was taking advantage of 64-bit because, if anything, could use a speed boost mm-hmm. in any operating system. It's a program whose name starts with the word Adobe. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just the way it is. So slow. And it's always been that way. Yeah. If you're going to use Photoshop, find out what the maximum amount of RAM is that your computer takes and put that in it. That's, that's always that's been the, the case. That's what Dr. Norman and I were discussing, discussing when we were yes. talking about which MacBook I would be getting, and I said, whatever it is, I need to get and you twice don't, as much. The tip, obviously, is you don't have to get the RAM from them. You can get that get was, your machine and then just buy RAM. That was one of the questions, is yes. if we could upgrade it at home or ourselves. Certain pieces, yes. Okay. Like most so laptops, you can put the RAM in. RAM is upgradable. Maybe you can do a hard drive, um, depending on how the machine is put together. But a lot of places, like, uh, again, MacForce, um, will do while you wait install. Okay. So you can buy RAM from them and go, I really need another gigabyte. And they'll go in the back, put it in for you. They don't charge anything for labor on that. It takes no time to put RAM in a MacBook and then move on with their day. So Adobe had been promised Creative Suite. Mm-hmm. Um, they had been promised a 64-bit operating system. So they were doing huge amounts of work to get all of the code 64-bit ready. And then Apple skipped into the developers conference and took all of that away. And I have wondered, ever since it's turned into this flash, 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 iPhone flash, iPhone flash, Mm -hmm. I've wondered if part of that isn't because they've sort of bumped the whole flash iPhone way down the priority list since 64-bit operating system was sort of pulled out from under them because all of that work was basically for naught at that point. Yeah. So I've always wondered if there was some sort of secret conspiracy there. Apple, iPhones, and conspiracy theories. Thank you for doing the tech show. (laughs) You're very welcome.